So looking at top try scorers, Jacob Stockdale for Ireland is a try scoring machine. Like you spoke about before, loves that little chip over, always regathers. But Ireland's form, and it's crazy to say this because they are going into the World Cup, world number one. Um, have they got a chance, Gitz? No. <laughs> no. No, I don't know. I, mean, I thought that was going to be my answer. No. But Every time I wake up the, in Australia, the rankings have changed. Change. There's a different number one. So, I mean, they're number one in the world for a reason, so they've definitely got a chance. I think their biggest problem is probably depth. I think if they've got a few crucial injuries, that will hurt them a lot. I think also fall of their, their main two guys. Everyone's talking for years about uh, sort of. Con Everyone's talked about Conor Murray and Johnny Sexton for so long, but their form has not been great. Six Nations, it was it was terrible. That that Welsh game, I would have subbed, if I was coach, I would probably subbed them both at half time. Not because you know, but you expect of these big players to show up. But um, I thought Carty's looked good in, in the warm up games that he's played. Um, but yeah, so I, I sort of said a, a year ago with Ireland look, that, that they're great when they're ahead, they can defend the lead, but they can't chase. And if you can find a way of stopping them and getting ahead in the first 20 minutes, they will always struggle. And that's England sort of gave everyone a blueprint on how, on how to beat them. And they haven't, what I was hoping um, was they would go away, work on their attack game, and, and it actually broadened their horizons a little bit. But then looking at the, at the warm up games, even though they got two wins over Wales they haven't really loosened those strings. You've got to get Stockdale, hand, he's got to have the ball in his hands. And as long as he then kicks it, it guarantees a try, because every time he does kick it, you get a try. But they, I mean, they need to somehow find their attacking flair. Otherwise, I think come knockout stages, they're going to struggle a bit. So I don't think you can go into their expecting Ireland to, guarantee, to be guaranteed a top spot. I think Scotland, if they play, you talk about depth of the squad, that's where Scotland are going to struggle. Um, but if they can keep all their front row, front players playing, they can beat anyone on their day because just the way that they play. You know that if, if Finn Russell's on his game, he can pull, pull things out of, um, out of his arse, basically. He can, you know, that England game up in Scotland where he was throwing passes that no one wanted to throw and, uh, and it all came off. And obviously the comeback from 30 odd points down to then somehow loot, somehow draw the game. They well, should have won the like game. Win. Felt like a win. Who, who, the who kicks home. the ball? But that's that's one thing they've got, you know, the rugby brain in terms of you, you're up with 90 seconds to play and you kick the ball back to it straight down the park. You're like, why don't you just keep the ball for 90 seconds and kick it out? But uh, that, there's definitely the ability to take on any team in, in that Scottish squad. Well, they've got a world-class player up and coming, and I'm calling world-class already. Mm -hmm. Has he done it on the world stage? He will do. Name's Darcy Graham, on the wing, peroxide blonde hair, from Hoyk, the same town as Stuart Hogg. Yeah. Um, so we haven't even spoken about Wales. Um, they've gone a little bit under the radar, gone about their work quietly. Uh, Gatland at the helm, his last involvement with Wales, he's been amazing for them, as we know. Wales, got a chance, Gets? Well, clearly they've got a chance. I think two weeks ago they were number one in the world. <laughs> For a day. Two and a half minutes. Yeah. Two and a half minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what a two and a half minutes. Yeah. It, they've also, I think, probably the last two tests for Wales have, as an Aussie have filled me with a lot of confidence. I think Wales have, I think they're probably the form team in that pool with Australia. But it's a team that, as an Australian, we've seems to be a bit of a bogey team for Wales. We seem to perform quite well against them. So... They've definitely got a chance. They've got great players, world-class players. They won the Six Nations, so they've got form there. It's just whether they've peaked a little early. Yeah, I mean, obviously they won, a, they won the Grand Slam as well. And my issue with them is is their their output in terms of scoring points. A bit like Ireland, if they fall behind, um, they have lived they lived that Six Nations off an outstanding defence, outstanding team spirit, which they're obviously going to take to Japan with them. But my worry is, is, is if they do fall behind, can they can they then score those tries if they need to, to catch up? And, and I'm not sure of what I've seen. A through the Six Nations, they they were the lowest try scorer in the Six Nations, um, and what I've seen through the the warm up games, it's a lot of just one out runners. And then they rely on their kicking game to get the ball back and. I thought North looked sharp, but they don't get the ball enough. Liam Williams needs the ball in his hands, so they just got to loosen the strings a little bit if they want if they want to be able to sort of get those points and and, and actually compete. But we'll have to wait and see. And they've only got one ten. Dan Bigger is the only mm -hmm. fit ten. Question marks over Patchell head injury. Well, obviously Anscombe. Yeah, obviously no, it's it's a bit of a blow with Patchell with his with the concussion thing because uh, he probably came on and changed that game uh, for when they played Ireland at home. 
yeah, I think we, Pat, Pat Schlopp has came on and changed that second that that test against Ireland at home. Um, but I think you know bigger is suits the way the style that they're playing a little bit. You know, there's no better ten under a high ball. No basically kicks it himself, catches it himself, gets back up, puts it in the corner or whatever. So, um, look, they they could, you know, the old adage was defence can win you a World Cup, um, but they're going to have to rely on it unless their attack proves a little bit. Right, lads, money on the table. Who's going to win the 2019 World Cup in Japan? I've gone for South Africa. I'm not 100% confident, but I think it's going to be wide open. Gets? If it's not Australia or Scotland, unfortunately, I think England. They're progressing well. I know, I know. I kills me to say it, but they're... Um, it must hurt. It does, <laughs> trust me, my heart's bleeding. Um, I, I think it's going to end up as a semi-final England-New Zealand, and I think whoever wins that game will win it. And who's going to win that game, Coach Mike? I'm still leaning towards New Zealand, just from experience. So we've got an Australian saying England, mm. we've got an Englishman saying but I'd love New to Zealand. Prove wrong. love to be proved wrong. Okay, I just want to see Scotland win it. We can all dream. They were so close, 2015. Uh, if I was playing, Should I would have called. Should we live that? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> if I was playing, I would have called a two-step lob. I'm just saying, then we would have secured it, kicked out. So who called it? You blaming oh, someone? I, 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 don't, I don't know who was calling that day, but we should never play for Scotland again. <laughs>